Our next step is going to be gluing. I have some contact adhesive here. It is Paddox brand uh, contact adhesive. As I mentioned before, a lot of people in foam fighting in the West prefer to use DAP brand, uh, but pretty much any contact adhesive will work for what you need. When you're using this stuff, make sure you're in a well ventilated area. I'm sure you've noticed we went out to my hallway here right by the window. Uh, if you want, you can wear a respirator while you're using this, and that will help protect your lungs. This can is pretty old, so I'm going to give it a good shake. You should always shake it up before you use it. It, it tends to kind of set a little bit in the can and uh, not be as liquid when it gets sticky. It's much harder to use. This is a, kind of a unique kind of glue. If you haven't used it before, it's a little counterintuitive. I have this piece of foam here from our cutting earlier. I'm going to use this as my brush. And the key to this is you need to apply it to both sur surfaces, wait for it to dry, and then put them together. And if you do it correctly, once it's dry and you touch two pieces of it together, it's going to be bonded instantly with a very strong bond. This is the kind of stuff they use when they make shoe soles and that kind of thing. You do not want to get this on your skin like I just did, <laughs> so try to be careful about that. If you do get it on your skin, it's going to leave you itchy and uncomfortable. So we have the core here. I'm going to coat the core in a thin layer of the contact cement and let it dry. Usually takes, with new contact cement, with a, brand, a fresh new can, it usually takes up, up to 20 minutes, 15 or 20 minutes. And uh, with the older glue like this that's been sitting around for a while, it tends to dry a bit quicker, maybe 10 minutes. You'll know it's dry if you uh, touch it with your finger and your finger doesn't stick in it. If it just feels tacky, but it doesn't actually feel wet and it doesn't stick to your finger. Just that thin layer is enough to hold it on. Another option if you want to make an even stronger bond, you can sand your fiberglass a bit to roughen up the surface area and make the glue bond better, but generally that's not really necessary because this is going to be sandwiched inside so much foam. As you can see the foam makes a great brush for this stuff. Just smear it on and that's pretty much good for this. It just needs to dry now so I'll set that here. Now we want to get the inside of this uh, center piece all along these surfaces on the inside. It's hard to do it without touching each other so I, I usually bend it like this. That way that they, they won't touch together and they won't bond before I want them to. Because like I said, once this stuff dries and it, it touches itself, it's pretty much an instant bond. And it's quite difficult to pry apart and fix if you make a mistake. So take your time. Got a little bit too much this time. You do not need it to be very thick. Just cover the whole surface, spread it out. It'll absorb a little bit into the foam. Usually. I mean, you are going to end up getting this on your fingers, unless you wear gloves. There's not really, no matter how careful you are, you're going to get a little bit on yourself. It's not a huge deal, but it is. It can be a little uncomfortable. As I said, this is not exactly easy to do without getting it on yourself, so take your time, be careful. Chinese people singing in the background, that's because it's a national holiday over here. The old guys are out in the park singing songs. Good to go. I'm just gonna spread this a little smoother. Make sure I get all the little nooks and crevices in the bottom here. And you can see I got the whole thing. Whoops. 
So I'll just uh, set this to dry, make sure that the two edges don't touch each other and they don't get a bunch of dirt on them and we'll come back to this in a few minutes.